thank you for coming for, to this meeting. Um, so the idea is that we want to expose all the evidence that you've got okay. via the grand jury system. I understand okay. that. And you've done an amazing job. Um, John no, Patterson, really. others who have been exposing your work on, on, on YouTube, you know, radio hosts, etc. What we want to do now is not just talk about it, but actually Action. really examine it properly, lawfully. I understand. In a in a constitutional structure that's constitutionally made available to okay. us. Okay. Uh, to give you an example, when you want to make an accusation against somebody. It has to be uh, uh, fully supported with document evidence. I understand that. However, as an engineer, a Royal Air Force and a mining engineer, what I've understood that there is individual and collective accountability when you, when you have documents involved. And whether it be a corporate registration or a director's listing as a, a director of a company, there is a historical A to Z trail within a company when somebody is a director of that company. Within, within the uh, remit of my sort of expertise, which includes uh, fake oil, gas and mining companies, to which is my, my prime subject, but also to understand how they manage to launder billions of pounds to offshore companies yeah. in the British Virgin Islands, Panama, Barbados. And each time that you look at an individual victim, as uh, you have witnessed, there's just two today, is that they will all have a common origin in my books, which are what I class as boiler rooms. But they're can also... Can you explain, just yes. for the novices, what is a boiler room? Well, it can be a, a nondescript address in a terraced uh, block of terraced houses, where, where from that particular address, hundreds of companies will be registered as being uh, active out of that address, and with multiple directors from all over the world, Israel, Panama, Cyprus, Germany, Russia, all being registered on the census record as living in that address. And, and what's that's what the main I, address that you found? The, the main addresses that I have found have been in, uh, structured around Finchley Road, <laughs> specifically 788, 790 Finchley Road. And how many companies are registered? Well, there's 205,000 companies which are origined out of that particular address by the administrators, and they are the controlling directors of Temple Secretaries Limited and Company Directors Limited, Centrum Nominees Limited, and multiple other offshoot of the, those basic corporate... Give us a couple of examples of the companies or the subsidiaries that are registered there and who owns them and who are the directors of those companies. Of the 206,000? Yeah, just a few. Some of the more well Well, I've got, I've got the files with me. We'll, we'll have a look at that later, yeah. but just give us an example. Well, if you took Noricum Gold Limited, which is, um, obviously it's had a subsidiary name, which has changed. So the company that's currently registered there is Noricum Gold Limited. But you, when you check the other company formation um, search engines, you'll find it used to be called Gold Mining Company Limited, but it changed its name. And so the, the, the listed secretary of that company which lists on the alternative investment market, which is under a rule, AIM Rule 26, they have to file certain documents pertaining to the company. And it's by understanding how you can search the company records to get an overview of the controlling secretaries and directors. Well, um, to, give you, to give you an example, to give you an example, there has been a press release and TV footage of the magnificent oil find uh, near Gatwick Airport. Mm. That's estimated to be 50 to 100 billion barrels of oil. Mm. It's a scam. Yeah, I read about that. Yeah. It's a scam because I know the people that are pushing it. Yeah. Not only do I know the people that are pushing it, I know the brother of the person, person who claims to, that oil is there. And I've been in correspondence with his brother in Australia and fully understand how MI5 are involved in this. Mm -hmm. So. It's interesting that, actually. That evidence, well, yeah. yeah, but that evidence can be used in a court of law because I've got audio and video footage of me corresponding with a gentleman, the gentleman's brother in Australia, mm -hmm. who says to me in an audio uh, outburst that the person that recruited him is XMI5. Yeah. 
Right. And have they taken lots of money from lots of people to invest in that? Hundreds of millions. Oh. Hundreds of millions yeah. from innocent people. And not only just innocent people. Mm. Banks will buy uh, bulk shares, right. pension funds, financial institutions, and then the little tiny investor, who is the ultimate target, is to I identify those people which would then um, isolate them from the rest of uh, uh, a corporate entity that can fight on their behalf, much like the people that I'm with here today. So tell us, how long have you been doing all of this research? About 14 years. That's when I first became involved in South Africa, when my partner, who you've spoken to, was a victim of fraud, which was only $50,000. However, when you looked at the amount of victims there were, it worked out of 130 million US dollars. That was just South Africa, right. not the rest of the world. There's another South African link, isn't there, with Cameron going over in the, is it 80s? Yeah, 1989. You, 1989. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, that involves uh, a gentleman who I've been uh, corresponding with uh, telephonically. Uh, this man has very close connections to the corridors of power. And it was just that he contacted me um, and uh, because he had MOD contracts, he wanted to, for the future of this country, he wanted it to be made known what he knew about uh, as a, a sort of uh, assistant in delivering munitions to Iraq and Iran. He was brought in because his company was uh, suffering financially and then he was asked to participate in using his particular engineering product to load 20-foot ISO containers. And so he was taken to Pelandaba near Pretoria in South Africa, which I'm very familiar with, which was a secret base for nuclear weapon development and part of Arms Corps. And that's where David Cameron came into it, when as a young conservative. He went there with David Kelly, Dr. David Kelly. Oh, okay. Yeah, and with a guy called, I believe, Sir Kenneth Warren. Now, Sir Kenneth Warren is an aeronautical engineer, and Kenneth Warren, I'm told by my source, uh, was there to facilitate the removal of nine active, in order, serviceable 20 kiloton. It's interesting that they wanted to remove them. Yes, before the ANC before government. Before the, 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 the black government took That's over right. from the, the white apartheid. Yeah. So it was safe in the white apartheid people's hands, but not in the communist ANC government. Okay. It was, the, it was the, the, the ANC was trained, right. uh, their, their intelligence officers yeah. were trained in Russia, okay. I know, okay. because of my military background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were trained in Russia, yeah. and they currently, uh, most of the top intelligence division of the ANC yeah. were all they trained are, in Russia. They are, they are, yeah. And they also work with Jonas Savimbi in Angola. So sometimes when you look at a rebel force, yeah. it depends which side of a, a, a curtain that you're acting for. Yeah. For myself, particularly with the Royal Air Force, we are inducted to believe that the enemy is an enemy yeah. uh, that fights dirty ways. Yeah. And I'm quite versed in uh, counterintelligence. So what, the, was, what, what exactly did Cameron do then? So there were these well, nine I, nuclear warheads. Well, I believe... He was going to have them decommissioned in America, and then what happened? Well, I believe, I'm told by my source, that six were to go to Chicago right. for decommissioning. And then three were to be purchased by Tory grandees in order that they make a lot of money by reselling them to the government. Do you understand? Yeah. So and it was a cash deal. Years. That's right. But names have been mentioned to me, which are quite high up in the Tory party, yeah. where they purchased these things for cash uh, at Durban Harbour when they were railed from Pelland Harbour in these ISO containers. And the cash changed hands at Durban Harbour before they were loaded on the ship. That was part of the requisite of purchasing these. And, and the Cameron was overseeing all of this? The Cameron went there to, I'm told, to yeah. orchestrate the deal of the purchase of three mm -hmm. and yeah. the removal of nine. Right. And the three were required for the retake of Oman, right. so I'm told. That if Saddam had used chemical or bio agents, yeah. they would use it in a retaliatory attack against Baghdad. And who had sold these uh, chemical agents to Saddam in the first place? We did, I expect. Yeah, yeah. Porton Down or yeah. somewhere like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's Dr. What, that's David how they Kelly. Mean. Dr. David Kelly. Uh, it, say, I, I'm not here to, to put no. blame on anybody. No. I'm here because I love my country. Yeah. 
and I love everybody else's sovereign country. Yeah. And I don't believe that we should be part of any conspiracy yeah. by telling lies to protect politicians. That's, right. That's why I'm here. Right. Brilliant. Thank you. So today in particular, we're here, and that's why I've invited Belinda here as well. Yes. Um, because you have massive evidence against Lord Janna. I don't have massive okay. evidence. What I have yeah. is the direct link yes. between a five-year court case against Miss Andrea Davison, Tara Andrea Davison, who fled pre her criminal trial in the Mole Crown Court on the 4th of the 7th, 2012 when she was found guilty of 26 of 27 charges of fraud. Part of the uh, raid on her property on the 13th of the 1st, 2010, I am led to believe by documents that I recovered that the Derbyshire police seized illegally over 7,000 documents, not just related to arms to Iraq, but also to paedophile ring investigations, to which she claimed she was a paedophile ring investigator notwithstanding that she also claimed that she was an arms to Iraq intelligence officer and also was the advisor, intelligence advisor for the select committee of the Department of Trade and Industry. My case um, where I published information on the internet about her involvement in massive fraud which is linked to the Labour Party. So, I'm bringing into you a context of association not just with the documents that I recovered on Miss Andrea Davison's criminal involvement in fraud, theft and money laundering to Cyprus, Panama, British Virgin Islands, but also the involvement of senior politicians where I will show you some documents. You can take them. You. you can take them. Which links then um, to Mick Creedon. You must have seen that name. Yes. Now, Mick Creedon yeah. was the officer, the chief of the Derbyshire Police, who I first made a Freedom of Information right. request as to where the documents that the Derbyshire police seized from her property on missing arms to Iraq documents because of the Chilcot inquiry. And I'm at Royal Air Force and I work with nuclear weapons and so I understand the ultimate destruction, destructive power of nuclear weapons and if they were to be used and set off, say, in a car park in London to start a Third World War. And that's why my objectives were, is to find out the authenticity of the documents okay. that Andrea Davison claims were removed from her property, right. and also the information linked to paedophile networks. Right. I made the Freedom of Information request, not just as a part of our civil case against Andrea Davison, exposing her in massive fraud, but also to find out the security of those documents and whether they were then handed off to the Chilcot Inquiry and to the paedophile investigations out of the City of London Police. And I was, uh, the reply back from them, which I can show you the reply, all it stated was that because there was a continuous police investigation, that they would not release that information to me. Okay. Now, I'm quite disgruntled. How long ago was this? Well, I can show you the documents, but uh, say, I've got the files with me. We'll, we'll, we'll show you is the technical evidence and the forensic evidence, okay. because they are contained in case HQ 10D 04366, Royal Courts of Justice, Queen's okay. Bench. So they're public document access. Yeah. You with me? Yep. So those documents have been filed yeah. on behalf of myself. I filed them okay. in, a, in a, one of eight large ring bind files right. which have been sealed at the Royal Courts of Justice, right. which can be used right. in evidence against anybody, should they so Tell wish. Tell us a little bit more about the paedophile connection. The, well. The, well, as you know, Lord, uh, uh, Lord Janna has been investigated and claimed to be a paedophile uh, by many victims. I think there were 20 victims that have uh, given evidence to the police and, yes. the, and the police found that there was a case to answer for. Yes. Um, and then they, the, the Crown Prosecution Service said, well, all of a sudden he's got Alzheimer's. And That's right. And but, then I, but then I, because of my ability to dismantle corporates, what I did do is I did a five-minute check to find out that Lord Janna was still an active director on the 10th of the 4th when he resigned 2015. Not a year before, but just now. So if he was competent and capable as a non-executive director to draw a salary, it must mean that he was compus mentis. He's also going to the House of Lords. That's right. He's also claiming, like claiming all his fees and And my, my, uh, my sort of objective was that when you 
looked at his 13 companies, which I did. I dismantled every company to find out who his prime directors were at the same time sat on the same board. And that's when you find there's a massive link to Zionists running Finchley Road. Tell us more about that. Right. You understand? So. Some of the people in the Hampstead case are supposed yes. to have connections with those addresses in Finchley Road. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the Hampstead, the uh, satanic cult? Well, no. so-called satanic cult. I mean, ritual abuse cult, anyway, or okay. paedophile yeah. cult. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring in as, as uh, also audio-video evidence that the gentlemen, two gentlemen that I assisted in the police station now, made it quite clear that um, this is a, uh, no, it should be a criminal case for fraud, theft and uh, organised yeah. crime. Yeah. However, we do, don't w want to uh, harm their case in any way. However, those, those are directly linked to 788, 790 Finchley Road. That's and bad. those people, the controlling directors, are Barbara Cahan, Mary Philomena Stephen, David Perlman, Deborah Cahan, and uh, uh, multiple members of the Cahan family. These people have control, when you look at company director chain, of hundreds of thousands of companies, a shell company. A shell company is just used to transfer and launder money in and out of the company that can hold a bank account. So you can, by using your accounting and auditing ability, use a shell company to move money to a subsidiary in the British Virgin Islands and your bank account remains there with a pound in it. However, you've just moved 10 billion through it. And all it's gonna show is one pound. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, to understand my, my research, this is not hearsay, this is factual. It can be taken, you can look at the documents, and as I've said to the police officers, the evidence is there, if you've got the courage, you will be breaking down the biggest organized crime system in the world. But they won't have the courage because they operate with commanders above them right. who are Freemasons. Absolutely. And, and it's the same with the judiciary. That's right. I don't want to go into that because then you become classed as a conspiracy theorist. Right. I'm just an engineer, a, I, I think a reasonable engineer who has an ability to dismantle organized crime. But I charge nobody anything. All I want is that there be justice in this country for everybody throughout the world. And those people that have done it, politicians, they should go to jail for a long time. Because it's not just organized crime, this is treason. Because they are protecting the very people who are stealing from the National Health Service, the banks, the pension funds. And they are being rewarded by giving them knighthoods. Yes. Unfortunately, it's, it's a system that needs to be flushed. And if I can help in any way with using a bit of vacuuming that I've got, is that I, I offered the police, I said, I'll show you. I'll show you where to get the money back. I know where it's gone. I know where it's gone. I know which accounts it's gone into. I've traced them. I've done all the work. All you have to do is have the cojones to go and get it and seize it as a proceeds of crime. Then we wouldn't have a problem with the National Health Service. So obviously the police have, have ignored your yeah. evidence. Well, because it's going to lock politicians up. The courts have ignored your evidence. Yeah. So this is what we're hoping for now, yes. is so. that the people, the masses, they do not ignore your evidence. Well, I hope not. It's not for me. It's for everybody. All these people walking yeah. past your window. Yeah. They've got no concept of how to steal a billion pound with a pen. We don't, yeah. I know. And I just want to help people understand, instead of going blindly, running around like chickens with their head cut off, is that they take five, ten minutes and understand that ultimately it will affect them, their children, their grandchildren, is to take a while and look at some of the stuff. That's all. Gordon, I'm really excited because I really feel that for the first time in a very long time that you've, you're, you've got the thread, you're holding the thread that well, can so. unravel the whole corrupt Pedophilic, yeah. System. Well, I, I, I'm trying to help people. Trust me, this is very personal to me. I've got yeah. three nieces that have yes. been, been victims eh, from the age of four to seven, and my sister's ex-husband, the stepfather of the children, he spent two years inside. His, his father was a police officer, do you understand? Well, that's one of the problems. I was going to come to yeah. that because we've got a corrupt police, police yeah, force. Yeah, well. And some forces are more corrupt than others. I understand, I understand. You know, you can actually see, you know, the black spots all over the country where they... Where but the we have to believe, are. as an individual, 
I have to believe that there are good people out there. Yes. And I believe, like in the services, we're only we're only told to do what we do. You know, we're only come from. I didn't join join the army to uh, pull in a plastic bag and hide in a ditch. No, I joined to be an engineer to fix things. Do you understand? There's a difference to repair things, to make things better. Like Not just being where the integrity is out in some kind of operational system. Pardon. It's almost like you're trained to distinguish where the, the integrity of a system is out. Every person that I ever worked with throughout my 12 years yes. in a commended service, every person that I worked with was committed and believed in the government that what we were doing was the right thing. Yeah. And we were taught that the enemy has... Yeah. And I looked at it uh, throughout my military career when I went to the Persian Gulf. Uh, I went all over the world. Mm -hmm. When I looked as an engineer, when I looked at some of the people who we were told were terrorists, where we were fighting in armoured helicopters, firing missiles from five miles away to people on bicycles wearing flip-flops and carrying an AK-47. We've, we've seen video footage yeah. of that all over Look, YouTube. And wedding party. I, I'm, yeah, well, I'm not here to, yeah. to uh, uh, distract from the main purpose, is to highlight and expose those uh, corrupt people within the government that are affecting millions of lives every day. There's a, a quite dangerous sounding loose thread in the middle of the, your discourse, which is the three nuclear weapons, which yes. you yeah, mentioned, well, um, for the Tory grandees who yeah. ultimately for the Tory really party. That's really relevant at the moment uh, with of what's course. going on with ISIS. So what's the destination for those Well, my, my, my point was that the, my source of information, who speaks to me three times a day on the telephone, sometimes I don't know answer. You understand? Because yeah. He's a lonely man, but he's a very intelligent man. He deals with and grew up with the peoples in the corridors of power, lords. I can name some of them. Uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg. He knows these people personally. He's not going to lie to me. He knows uh, Sir Kenneth Warren personally. So what we're looking at is we're looking at, as a duty of care and in the public interest, the information that's been passed to me, where he likes to keep his name well away from any exposure is the documents that have been given to me I have forwarded to police and politicians and they don't know what to do with it because what it will do is it will lock up Tony Blair, David Cameron and the rest of the cronies who have had this information and have been blackmailing each other for many years. Now those weapons I am told uh, the orchestrator, the middleman, the fixer was a guy called John Arnold Breeden. He was a kleptomaniac Rhodesian weapons trader that was very close to the Thatcher family, Sir Mark Thatcher. And that's where our personal case happened in South Africa. It's all connected. Well, I'm glad you said that, because that's why I wouldn't let this go. Not because I became emotionally involved, because I had a duty of care. Is that when you're dealing with arms traders, they're the people that are starting the, the trouble, which brings people like myself when I was serving into conflict. I mean, there's not seen one politician welcome a coffin back off a, a, a C-130 Hercules, not one. And yet they're just left in a graveyard as a concrete plinth for a politician like Tony Blair to charge £500,000 to give an interview for a charity company. Do you understand? I, I, I've got a heart. And I've got children that should grow up in a better world. That's the main thing. Okay? Yeah. We, we have hearts. Of course we do. They don't. Their hearts are cold. No, they have hearts, but for their own, um, we're all in this together, which is a, a sequence of, uh, um, I call them the syndicate, that they believe that they operate um, without borders and they're the elite. I don't know if people call them it's the Bilderbergers. It's the definition Bilderbergers. of organised crime, right? Pardon? It's the definition of organised well, crime, Well, right? pe people, they will send a police car down to Sainsbury's for an Eastern European stealing a chicken. And then they will handcuff that person, drag him before the courts, and he'll do two years, and then repatriate it from Lithuania. However, when people steal a billion pounds, and you tell the police officer, these are the people that did it, this is how they did it, and this is where the money is, they all turn a blind eye. They don't want to know. Well, that is the main uh, problem in my But it's view. not my anger. Yeah. Make no mistake, I, I hold away the emotion as an engineer. I will try my best for as long as I've got to make sure people like yourself understand that if you spend a couple of hours a week 
and understand instead of watching a serial on the TV, you can look at something which will make you understand a little bit better about the people who stand there who call themselves right honourable. There's a lot to be learned here. It's very ironic, isn't it? Okay, so Gordon, can we have a look at some of the paperwork that you're going to be... No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, back in 2010, while I was finding out uh, frauds operating out of Bangor, traced from Finchley Road, I, by accident, came across a two-page document uh, linked to this woman, Andrea Davison. You will have seen her on uh, various uh, web footages where she's been interviewed by uh, Richie Allen, David Icke, uh, where she says that she's uh, actually in um, South America, where she's been, she fled because of paedophile investigation. That's not quite right. Because the truth is, she was a fraudster, forger, but she had very high connections with the Labour Party, and I'll show you why. Okay, from, by accident, I recovered this from the internet, and there's no copyright restriction, but it had a website address, www.afbio.co.uk, and from there is a disclosure by Andrea Davison of whether Derbyshire police raided her property. Hence my relationship, because I live in Derby, and my... Uh, confronting the Derbyshire police. That's right. Where are these documents? Mm -hmm. I have it as a duty of care mm -hmm. because of the Chilcot inquiry, mm -hmm. which has been stalled for five years. Just, uh, uh, Is there something with Sir John Chilcot himself? Just, can yeah, you just, you, can you just sort of like summarise yeah. the Chilcot inquiry? Well, the Chilcot inquiry was to determine how and why we should never make the same mistake to go into war with another country based upon frivolous material, false evidence, yeah. false evidence yeah. which uh, Tony Blair claimed, right honourable, Tony Blair claimed that there were weapons of mass destruction. On the other hand, I have it, that those three nukes were moved into Iraq and then into Syria. That's what I'm told. And, um, so you're talking about the three nukes that you mentioned from South yes. Africa? Yeah. Right, okay, so they're still on some yeah. sort of course Yeah, somewhere. because there's, there's a money trail. Right, Is that so they're now in Syria, you say? No, I believe that they, uh, the guy that orchestrated as the fixer the deal between Astra Holdings mm -hmm. and Arms Corps mm -hmm. via the DTI mm -hmm. and a guy called Stephanus Adolphus Cock, who was an MI6 agent who worked for Midlands Bank. Mm -hmm. And he was inducted as a director of Astra Holdings to do the backstreet dealing with arms. Mm -hmm. And he worked with people like Mohammed Adnan Khashoggi, uh, Al Fayyad, you and Dodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So, this goes into another uh, uh, degree of people. However, the Derbyshire police raided her property and she published this on the internet as a sort of panic. Because what they did when they seized it, they seized 7,000 documents. So she claimed. Do you understand? And this was uh, her statement of evidence regarding the companies, which I was tracing this one, Quantum Holding, which emanates and is associated with Finchley Road. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. I worked from the boiler room out and found her, yeah. and there she is being arrested for organized crime, fraud, theft, and money laundering. So, she put this out on the internet. Now, mm -hmm. I looked straight away, and I saw there were a lot of head of bars. Yeah. House of Lords, Gordon, Gordon Brown, Brown yeah. um, Derby Police, Derby Police Fraud victims, investigations, arms to Iraq documents. That's paedophile investigation. Sorry, that was a teardrop on there. Oh. I, I really, it struck me so great. Is it? Um, Is it really? Yeah, really. I've got three nieces that suffer to today. They're on heavy medication. One has had her five children taken off her by the social services. It has a knock on effect, it's a ripple effect. And, and so, as I said, when I looked at this, and quickly, because you can see the date there, which yeah. is, can be authenticated, yeah. you will see a number there. Yeah. That's my file number for the Royal Courts of Justice okay. in a sealed uh, ring binder. Okay. That's 500 pages. Wow. So when I do things, I do it properly. Mm -hmm. So page 64 and 65, mm -hmm. that's the two pages. That's mm -hmm. yours. That's yeah. to give you an overview oh, of you. what she claimed. These are the items that she claimed that the Derbyshire police removed from her property illegally 
because they never signed a receipt to give it to you. Uh -huh. Hence, you put the Derbyshire police in focus mm -hmm. of operating outside the remit of a process so of crime So if they have no receipt, seizure. they can disappear it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But when you're, t when you're talking about um, arms to Iraq documents, you know, with the Chilcot. These are the items that she claimed, and you will see. Oh, yeah. uh, there's where she claims what was removed. Yeah. And I know that she's a Mason's daughter because yeah. she put there Masonic jewels. Yeah. Her father was a Mason. Mm -hmm. So, you have that there. Then there's um, documents concerning a nuclear warhead and group discussions with Peter Hain, Pete Sawyer, David Lowry, and Peter Hain's researcher, Isabel. So, there's a there's what was the connection with Peter Haynes now? With, with well, I'll tell, I'll tell you. When he was the Defence Minister, wasn't he? At the yes, time. Yes, that's right. So, yeah. what you have is individuals named within a document which has been, although it's been put on the internet, what you have is a sequence of documents where I have made known to every politician that I can get. I want to find out who's telling the truth. All you need to do is grab this woman from wherever location, using the Foreign Office to bring her back to face investigation and to disclose what documents were taken, where those documents are now, and why the Derbyshire police never gave her a receipt, and why and where they are now. What safety are they? Do you understand? I don't care what, what, whether she's stolen six trillion pounds. I don't care. I want to know where those nuclear warheads are as a serviceman. And every serviceman will tell you we're talking about rogue weapons that could be started or mm -hmm. to start a third world war. Mm -hmm. If they say Russia's well, set up... Well, everyone's talking about, you know, the next well, false flag. Everyone's waiting Well, I'm for just it. saying, as a duty of care, I will try my best to make sure this doesn't get filed 13 mm -hmm. and shoved under a car park. Mm -hmm. That Pete, Peter Haynes will be brought before an inquiry mm -hmm. to say, yes, I knew this woman. Yes, she. I put documents in my safe. What documents? I want to know what documents. So, there's the four pages. Now, Lord Douglas Hoyle, and you're talking about Tara's relationship. Right. Out of the 400 documents I recovered from these websites, mm -hmm. these header bars, mm -hmm. included letters like this. Well, you can see, and letter-headed paper, to the Chief of the Derby Police, mm -hmm. Mick Creedon, mm -hmm. which will help you further. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Brilliant. now we're talking about... Uh, acting uh, as a police chief, mm -hmm. whether he has interfered with her criminal case mm -hmm. to yeah, get her out of it. the country. Right. Yeah. So that's where she's she out of right. the country. Well, we, she says she's in Latin America, but I don't know. Anybody that can understand how you can trace uh, Twitter accounts yeah. can start, find out to the yard yeah. where she is. Okay, so that's from Lord Doug Hoyle to the Chief of the North Wales Police mm -hmm. following her arrest mm -hmm. where those her other personal items are. Mm -hmm. it's, this, is, this is really different though, it's from the same man. Yeah, but this is handwritten. Uh, uh, okay, I mean this is like House of Lords letterhead. Letter yeah. It's, okay, it's, I'm just surprised it's just a bit different. Yeah, well, I'm it's saying David you can check. Mills. David Giles. Yes, no, 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 no. That's the person, she tried to hide his name there, but right. I'm very clever because I recovered the second one, okay. which lists his name. Okay. So she couldn't be much of a good of a, an intelligence officer, no, no. could she? Because she left his name here. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the 400 documents that I recovered and letters, personal letters, give to me a wider uh, understanding of her personal life. Right. You, you with me? Yes. For where she was employed, yeah. who she worked with, Pete Sawyer, investigative journalist, yeah. scumbag. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's about as much as I go to swearing. But um, So, Great. what we have is we have a handwritten one mm -hmm. which can be compared with a, a signatory expert, yes, yes. handwriting expert, yeah. to find out whether they're original. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's all about, mm -hmm. finding out the truth. Yep. Because if this is right and that is right, and then this is right, this is another one where he calls her Dear Tara. Oh. So now we have, just by the, the formatting of the, the letter, which is the signatures correspond. Mm. Right? This is the same. Yeah. Is that we have an understanding of a cl close relationship. Mm -hmm. This is following the police raid on a property, mm -hmm. which was the 13th of the 1st. So we have a sequence of events, mm -hmm. of communications, with senior 
police officers. Do you understand? So, there's another one. Thank you. And then, oh. from her historic, you know that signature, do you? I think so, yes. Ah, well, I do. Um, is that we have a letter uh, from the House of Commons by Tony Blair where Andrea Davison claimed to be a paedophile investigator. So she couldn't have been one of two, either in a rack being dropped behind enemy lines or she was walking into hospitals with a white gown going to beds where victims of paedophilia and taking their files. Because that's what she was doing. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm being told, I've been told that. Is that she would go in, she would speak to the patient with a white jacket on or a white coat on claiming to be a, 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 an appropriate adult, yeah. in, uh, interviewing the victims, making notes yeah. as saying that she was trained as a, an appropriate person to... Anyway, so here we have personal signal, which the date line, 1992. Oh, well, you'll have all the information, as much as so I can help. This, this is essentially Tara Davison. Yeah. And this connects to essentially all to, the fraud, yeah, Finchley Road, everything. Everything. everything yeah. um, the paedophile yeah. ring, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about Janna? Well, because Mick Creedon said that he, uh, it, when he was a chief constable, uh, I think he was working for the. Um, uh, uh, he was a. Not chief constable, he was a uh, DC. Uh, he was ordered from above to drop any investigations into the Lord Janet. Hence, these letters to Mick Creedon about Andrea Davison. Now, did he receive orders from Lord Doug Hoyle and Tony Blair to let her walk out of this country? I don't know. All I'm saying is, I don't believe in repetitive coincidence. Not Finchley Road, where she was linked to. What else have you got? Okay, this is this is a, also on House of Commons paper. This is why the Labour Party have run away from me. When I've shown them this, they've run. So they have Sir Ken Clark, who has also got a bad name, I believe, uh, to, uh, from Tony to Ken Clark, about the paedophile investigation. Now we have this one, which is headed missing nuclear oh, warhead. Right, okay. mm -hmm. And if you read that, she tried to cut the address out, but I know where she was living anyway. Okay. But you can see they've all been filed in yes. the Royal Court yes. of Justice. Same website. Mm -hmm. And I've done a full dismantlement of all this, uh, mm -hmm. which I've used in evidence. It's interesting. So this is from yeah. her. To Peter Hayne. To Peter Hayne. Following the What's Derbyshire the police. Yeah. Do you understand if you see the date? Yeah. I'm going to put these in date order, actually. They're yeah. not in date no, order. No, that's yeah. right. I've only just yeah. delivered Great. you. Go on, then. All right, so we were talking about Finchley Rose mm -hmm. and other companies that could be uh, identified as being a financial loss to, to the assets of this country and others. You know the Manas Air Base is in northern Afghanistan, and uh, it's a NATO base used by uh, US and coalition forces, aircraft, military aircraft. Well, back in 2010, I think of the time scale, with the frauds link, her link to Finchley Rose. Yeah. April 2010, uh, deconstructing the Manas fuel suppliers corporate structure. Now, that was where over $1 billion of the US defense budget was stolen by fraud from two companies operating out of Finchley Road. Wow. Oh Red wow. Star Enterprises and Minicorp, which I've done before this month, mm -hmm. the same people operating 205,000 companies. And you do have evidence for that? Yeah. Well, well I've got the full dismantlement. I've got all the, the, I've got all the paper Yeah, trail. I've got yeah. everything. I've got the full company's house declassification of and dismantlement of every company that operates as the controlling entity yeah. for the 2,000, 205,000. Right. So there's, there's the evidence of who the directors were and what percentage shareholders were, and they're linked to United States senators. You're talking about massive oh, fraud. Yeah, yeah. Not, not something. So there's that. Uh, when it comes to my, uh, um, my sort of ability to aid and assist, I was threatened by uh, a major law, law company 
in the city of London called Memory Crystal. Have you heard of them? They operate out of 44 Southampton buildings in London. And they represent multiple oil, gas and mining companies, which are virtual companies. And by that they, they will uh, uh, launch onto the ex exchange by flotation of shares, millions of pounds of shares to the general public and banks. Now, one of the companies that I dismantled in 2007 was a company called Euromin Inc., which was which purchased an old defunct care and maintenance uranium mine in Namibia, where I've been, because I was in that part of the world, and then know the mine. It was a worked out uranium mine. Where, where it was care and maintenance. That's mainly it. Okay. That will give you an insight, okay. and we can expand upon so that. So this is the one that we will use in the in the grand jury case? Well, I think there's enough evidence to force an investigation into the accuracy of that, mm -hmm. why they're refusing to bring her back to the Foreign Office, okay. because it would implicate senior politicians. Okay. That's what I would say. So this is essentially going after Tara... To, well, um, it's to, to work out the Andrea, authenticity yeah, yeah. of the paperwork, which will then link to Janet and Finchley Road. It doesn't matter which angle you go. Mick Creedon, yeah. Chief of the Derby Police, yeah. he is accountable. Yeah. You no know, uh, misconduct in, in public office. Yeah. It, I don't, I'm asking you, yeah. look at the information, yeah. ascertain which way you yeah. can make your best yeah. entry, and we can expand, we can open it bigger. Yeah. Because once you start picking at the saw, it'll just... The muck's going to come out. You haven't got 14 years. I can see you're busy. Yeah. I'm not busy. I've been doing this as a... And also the world hasn't got 14 years. It's no. urgent. Yeah. No, well, start, start very simply. Start with information mm -hmm. which um, has been sealed in the Royal Court of Justice okay. where these people should be made and asked to account yeah. for the information okay. that's contained on there. Okay. Yeah. She is a naughty woman. Put it like this. Yeah. But... She has used paedophilia um, uh, interviews mm. to distract the population right. away from what she was doing right. and who she was doing it for. Because she was a honey trap club operator in Bangor mm. called Club Odessa, mm -hmm. also known as Club Russia. Now, I don't want you to think of the Labour Party as being that, that way socialist Im implied. Mm -hmm. However, the people that I have traced in my expertise, dismantling the, the people that worked with her at that time, linked to East German and Russian directors. All of them. Great, really great. Help Thank yourselves. Thank you so much. A pleasure. It's, it's, it's one yeah. interview, isn't it? Yeah. Well, really, I hope yeah. so. I hope. Because it set us on a trail now. Yeah, so that, you can start my trail now. It's yeah. taken you 14 years. Cool. Carry on. So we're going to carry on sifting through the evidence, maybe, to, yes. you know, with a team that can work together on a grand jury. Yeah, I, can, I, can I just show you something very, very quickly? I don't want to... That's the dismantlement right. of Finchley Road. Right. Every director, every company. Oh, this is the Finchley Road. That's the Finchley oh, wow. Road. Wow, wow, wow. 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 Oh, yes. Oh. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, some names in there as well. <laughs> that's the fraud in um, Gatwick, mm. the oil. Yeah, yeah. That's the guy that's been... That's the brother of the orchestrator. So when I say I've got evidence, it's from his brother. Do you understand? It's so it's a complete dismantlement of Finch and Rowe. Every company. Really amazing. But that's that's how you know. I mean, yeah. you, there's over 205,000. Have you literally got every single one yes. named? Amazing. Yeah. And then this one is personal files for these uh, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. okay. This is a court file. Okay. There were nine of these. And I constructed them all. But it will show you. That there's the lady herself. Oh, yeah, there she is. Got one. And if you see the date of that, it's the 25th, uh, yes. sorry, 29th of oh, May. Oh, has she been interviewed by Sonia Bolton? Oh, Do you know, yes. I was with Sonia Bolton this afternoon in a, in a case in the... Yeah, well, I could have got her locked up. In a London crown yeah, but will Sonia Bolton interview you? Will Richie no. Allen interview you? No. So there's some, what's going on? Exactly. Yes, what is going on? I'll tell you. <laughs> 
is that you must understand how to dismantle um, David Allen and, and Richie David Allen. Allen. Yeah. 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 Right, for credibility, you can contact these people. It's 2.5 billion. I haven't lost his... So That's can I take these as well? Yeah, I'll take them. Okay, th th this was the Royal Courts of Justice. Oh, Peter A. Uh, yeah, Peter A. Yeah. Oh, you were talking about him. Yeah. All right, so to understand how it's sealed, mm -hmm. 17th of January 2014, mm -hmm. where her criminal trial started on the 4th of the 7th, 2012, after she fled. So she's left us in limbo trying to get our money back after her case of defamation was thrown out against us. So we've been in limbo for five years. So who... She took... Who she she took Andrea Davison took a defamation case out because I published on Peter A's web blog all the other... And it was oh, fantastic, it was thrown out? Yeah, it's been thrown out because she didn't file an N265 okay. uh, full disclosure okay. of... Um, reintroducing her case after our successful appeal. Okay. Do you understand okay. a bit of that? Yep. So, uh, in her case, uh, this was in our case, uh, 20th, 2014. So everything has been documented, so she didn't file, so they threw her case out. Do you understand? Yeah. But we want recompensing for the hardship that she's put me through, the financial hardship, over five years, which is extensive. I only look for justice, that's all. Yeah, yeah. I don't want anything else that I have. So everything is here. The case that was filed against the PAL Telegraph. Where do you think the PAL Telegraph was registered? Oh, you told me. Yes. <laughs> well, it's controlled opposition. And RTTV. And, and Press TV. And Press so, TV, yeah. So, so I have that evidence. Cozy premises, isn't it? <laughs> well, the BBC are making a fortune yeah. because if you check the directors of uh, RTTV, you'll find there's two people. Christopher and Mr. Wood, both brothers. So, it depends how deep you want to go so into research. Just one second, so the, say that bit again. Well, if you check, there's three variations of Russia Today TV and RT TV Limited, yeah. UK Limited. Yeah, yeah. When you check the directors, they used to work for the BBC. So, biased? <laughs> no, it's... It's there in many ways to conduct counterintelligence, isn't it? So, especially when you want to put reporters all over the world, isn't it? Yeah, counter. Sorry, controlled disinformation. opposition. Controlled opposition. Yeah. yeah. So, as I said, the, these are these are the exhibit lists when you looked at our my documents that we filed in her case. There's the exhibit list. That's what I filed. All the applications, all the evidence. There's her photograph again, so you can see that it's not a, a set-up structure. Correspondence. So we're gonna we're gonna come together again. Yeah, I Gordon. hope so. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're going to first of all sift through this. Yeah. And ask you know you're gonna be at the end of the phone call. You've been amazing. Pleasure. You've been there Thanks. all the time. Thank you so much for agreeing to come to this meeting today. Thank you so much for you know all the information that you're providing and everything that you're doing. I want to go fishing one day. I have stopped for 14 years. You will go fishing.